Here are six tips for backpacking solo in the backcountry. What's up backpackers, I'm Dan and welcome back to Backpacking Adventures where we talk about backpacking, hiking and gear. And if those things interest you and you're new to this channel, then consider subscribing, but make sure you hit that bell notification so you don't miss a thing. So today I'm gonna to talk about a few tips that can make your solo backpacking trip more comfortable. Because backpacking alone can be rewarding and it can be a little bit scary at some times. But before we get into the tips, let's talk about a few pros and cons. For some of the pros, you can hike at your own pace. You can start and stop hiking whenever you want. You can go as fast or as slow as you want. You can stop for camp when you get tired, whenever you want. And the next morning you can break up camp and get out of there whenever you feel like it. Now, some of the cons. You have to do all the camp chores yourself. If you're gonna build a campfire, you're gonna have to gather the wood and process it all by yourself. That could take some work. If you have an equipment failure, you're stuck, you're on your own. Say for instance, your stove breaks, well, you don't have somebody else there to borrow their stove. And the most obvious one, you just don't have anybody to talk to. So let's get into the first tip. And the first tip is one I always talk about is always, always, always make sure you tell somebody where you're going, what your itinerary is, give them a copy of your map, make sure they know your plans down to the T. Tip number two, as dumb as it may sound, but remember, you're alone. You don't have to compromise on anything because of anybody, you're by yourself. You have to get in the mindset that you're the only person that you have to plan for, for your backpacking trip. You're the only one that you have to take into account mileage, how far you wanna go, where you wanna stop, where you wanna camp, everything like that. It's all about you this time. And it can be hard just to think about yourself. If you're an experienced backpacker and you go backpacking with your friends a lot, you're always considering them as well as yourself when you're planning. But this time, you don't have to do that. Tip number three is having the right gear and knowing your gear. I've talked about this before. You wanna make sure you have the right gear for the terrain and the weather you're gonna be going in. If you're new to backpacking, you wanna make sure that you know your gear very well. You wanna make sure you get out there with your gear at a park, at a campground, or even your backyard to make sure you know how to set it up, you know how it works, and you know how it functions. Easy way to do it is on your first solo trip, go to a campground. Go someplace close to your house, so that way if something doesn't go right, or if you forget something, because that can happen too, you can easily bail and just get in your car and come home. Tip number four. Now this one is a hard one for me, and it's getting over your fear of animals. Just face it, animals are out there with you whether you like it or not. You're in their home, so they're going to be all around you. And the two common fears that a lot of people have are snakes and bears. For me, I'm not afraid of snakes at all. I could really care less. I see the snakes, I respect them, I give them their space and I move on. For me, it's bears that I'm terrified of and I may even have a little bit of paranoia about bears. So for snakes, you just wanna keep your eyes open. You wanna keep looking down. You never wanna have two headphones in your ear. You only wanna put one in your ear so if it's a rattlesnake, you can hear it rattle. Just pay attention, look on the ground for snakes, give them their space. If you come across a snake, you make sure you walk way around them. With bears, as you're hiking, you just wanna make sure you're making noise. You wanna let them know that you're there. You don't wanna surprise them. Almost always bears want nothing to do with you. So as long as they can hear you and know that you're there, you probably won't even ever see them. They'll be gone long before you realize it. I did make a video on dealing with bears. Make sure you check that out. That'll give you a lot of information on what to do. Tip number five getting over sleeping alone in the woods. Yes, being out in the woods at night can be scary. I always say in the winter time is the worst because it's just so creepy out there. There are no animal sounds. You can hear the wind. It's almost like a, a classic horror movie, but you can get over it. And when you're out here, you're gonna hear all kinds of noises. Sounds are magnified at night. For some reason, I don't know if your senses are enhanced from being out here or just from being scared they're enhanced, but I tell you, a little chipmunk runs by and you think it's an elephant. You're also out there in the woods, you're in a strange place. You're not at home in your bed with surroundings you're not familiar with. One thing you can do to put yourself at ease at night is to make sure you know your campsite. So after you set up camp and you know where your food's gonna be stored, you know where you're gonna be going to the bathroom, just walk around your campsite, walk around the perimeter, look at it from all different angles so that you become familiar with your campsite. Then once it gets dark, do the same thing again. Use your headlamp and walk around your campsite, knowing where everything is, looking at it from different perspectives, 
because it will look different to you at night than in the day. This will put you at ease to some degree because you'll be a little bit more familiar with your surrounding. One thing I always do is I wear earplugs. It's not even just for anybody that might be with me that's snoring, but it blocks out all those weird sounds that I just don't want to hear. My philosophy is if I don't hear the bear, it's not going to be there. But they do also come in handy when you're with other people and there happen to be snores. Tip number six is adequately plan your trip. Do as much research on the trail as you can. Know where water sources are, know where potential campsites are, know the potential mileage that you want to go. Again, for your first solo trip, you want to pick a trail close to home where you've probably already hiked. That way you are familiar with the trail. If it's a trail that you're not familiar with, do as much research as you can. Try to know where the water sources are, know where the potential campsites are, so that it's easier for you to navigate through your trip. You also wanna take into account your fitness level. You wanna make sure that you're able to hike the miles that you think you're going to be able to hike. In a lot of ways, it's always better to underestimate the mileage that you, you're gonna hike, so that way you're pretty much guaranteed you're gonna make it. Because no matter what you know of your hiking ability, the difference in terrain or even weather can affect how far you can go. And make sure you have a bailout plan. Make sure you know where some side trails are on the map so if you have to get out of the trail you can pretty easily. And with that bailout plan you also want to make sure that you have somebody that again knows where you are and that's someone you can call in case of an emergency or if you just need picked up somewhere. Basically there's just no easy way to get used to backpacking by yourself. You just have to get out there and do it. The more you do it the easier it is going to get. Tell me what scares you about backpacking alone in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.